start by thanking you for coming over, or rather having us over. Um, we are at Misty Harley's place in Second Life. You've got a nice parcel here. And we are... We are oh, there must be some kind of delay between me saying something and you getting it. But anyway, we're here because I read a nice discussion on the unofficial in worlds forums that is called Out of World um, about what changes you think might happen in virtual worlds. And it was, I had some, some thoughts on that, but I don't want to start with my thoughts. So what I found interesting is that uh, the discussion soon got from how what changes might happen to how we got disappointed with our visions uh it kind of us focused on inverts uh, but you're not in inverts anymore are you no um i left there a while back probably may i think it was mm -hmm. was there any reason for that Yeah, no. I mean, it was probably just time to head out for a while, take a break. Um, I was building and trying to role play, and it just wasn't going where I wanted it to, I guess, where I thought it was going to go, maybe. Well, that was the interesting thing. What, what, what did you think it would be going towards? Because... Everybody kept saying that they were disappointed that their vision didn't came through, but um, nobody really said what their vision was. Basically, when I first started in Worlds, um, one of the things that was that drew me in, so to speak, was that it was going to be different than Second Life, I guess, and. I started noticing things were going more and more towards the Second Life direction. Granted, now InWorlds is a, basically an early world. They're still in um, beta. They're still growing. They're still working towards many different things within their own world. Um, and it wasn't that it wasn't moving fast enough. It was just that it wasn't going the way that I thought it would. So I just decided to step back, I guess. What, what what did you think it would be going like? I mean, different from Second Life? I mean, it's certainly different. It's just probably a different kind of different. That's what it was, Spanish, to be honest with you. You start out thinking different as in a totally new world, something that may appear the same, which it does, um, but it does act completely different than Second Life. And when you think different, you don't think that. You think something completely different. Um, whole new type of world. You're going to be able to do things there that you may not be able to do anyplace else. And from what I understand, through that forum board that you mentioned, Out of World, and that particular thread, different things will be coming that Trank mentioned. But it's not... It's not radical. I guess what I was looking for. So, I mean, if a completely different approach, like something like a cloud party or something like uh, the now dead Blue Mars, is that more the kind of different you were looking for? Have you yes. tried them? I think so. Something, com something that visually looks similar, but completely acts differently. And that was my own... I guess my own vision of it, um, although it was never, it was it was said that it was going to be different, but it just didn't turn out to be the different that I thought it was. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. It just I just try to find out what that what that different was or would be. So so a different visual style and different interface, different way to to behave in world. Yes, yes. And um, by 
being in there for two years, um, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, everything that I was able to do there, I can do here. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's, true. that's true about all of OpenSim, that it's pretty much the same as Second Life, only cheaper. The, the nice thing about Inverls, I think, is that you have a lot of commodities that are missing on, in the rest of OpenSim. Like you have some stuff that makes you, you know, designer that, that create the stuff there and some selection of items you can buy that makes you look like on par or almost on par with Second Life. So. I think out of all the OpenSim grids, it is still the best for people who are looking for something like Second Life only cheaper. Most definitely. And if you're a builder, it's probably going to be um, one of your best grids for a closed garden to go to. They have major amount of prims. I don't even quite remember what they are anymore. I think it's up to 45,000. And that's where I actually learned how to build. I was, uh, I did have a store in Second Life before I left and moved over to Inworlds. And I was really a crappy builder, to be honest with you. And I went to res a sculpt and I was having problems with it. And Elena came over and she said, why don't you just build it with prims? And it was a light bulb moment because Inworlds offers something that Second Life doesn't. And that is, like I said, amazing amount of prims for your money. Mm -hmm. And you can take advantage of that. And you can build things with such detail on just prims alone, adding the sculpts for smaller details mm -hmm. that you can't really do here. Yeah, that's true. That's true about OpenSim on a whole. If you build something in OpenSim, you try to, you, you start forgetting about prim limits and uh, just make it as complex as you want without, you know, caring about whether or not people are wanting low prim stuff right and that's a huge draw especially for builders as well as decorators i love landscaping and um when you have that ability to not worry so much about how many prims you have yeah. it's a wonderful thing especially since they don't have mesh yet but it, I, from what i understand it's coming i thought they had they don't okay don't think so they might by now I try to keep a pretty close eye mm -hmm. on it um, I know it's in the works definitely so that's going to change the whole landscape over there from what I understood is that um, well Inworlds is is using OpenSim as a, as a base and is trying to stay pretty much compatible with OpenSim and Second Life but on it's the same note they try to implement technology that they believe to be better like the new um they have a new scripting engine that is called flux uh, the advantages of which i aren't entirely clear to me um, but it's supposed to be faster somehow and they're working on a new physics engine called physics and what I what I found surprising is that that the community is really pretty close to the to the developers of Inworlds. I mean, it seems like you all know each other somehow. Yeah, sort of because it's a small world, um, less people. When I first started there, uh, probably three years ago, there was maybe five, ten people online. We had the founders at their welcome area um, in World's Desert Island, I believe the name of it is, welcoming you as a new resident into their world. Um, I'm not sure how much they're, they're active like that now. They have their mentor program. And I really think that has something to do with it. From what I understand, I've been in Second Life for six years, but I came in um, in 2006. So the people had already started to build up but from what I understand Second Life pretty much ran the same way everybody sort of knew everybody and if you didn't know the person personally you knew of them there was no real anomaly I guess so mm. to speak, going on in either world as new worlds 
at the, are there still only the three founders who are working in in, in worlds or is there a, a larger team now from reading their forum boards again i haven't really been there since may but reading their forum boards they do have more employees online uh, working with them through different means but i believe still the three founders are the three core or the three core people that run the show and out of these tranquility is pretty much the uh, tranquility drexler is pretty much the the guy who runs the the technical side of things from what i understand yes okay well then the work he did so far was is pretty impressive I just I think Ed hands down is probably one of the best coders you're ever going to come across there. I don't know anybody that could ever complain about his abilities because they are absolutely amazing. I think he's just trying to walk a very thin line between improving the technology and trying not to break uh, the compatibility with, with current or existing viewers and, and, and second life. And I have a feeling sometimes he wants to do more, but is afraid that the that the user base won't like it. For the catches, um, there's only so much that you can do if you're trying to please a current user base to bring in a new user base. Yeah. You don't want to break the content, but you want to introduce new things. Where do you draw that line? That's true. And you know, we have certain limitations. I mean, prims need to work, sculpties need to work, and now meshes need to work the way they, they're expected to work. You can't just change that. So, I, I guess the. And when you're working, you know, on something based off of OpenSim, which you would have to verify this because I'm not super familiar with OpenSim, but that's based on Second Life. So now you're trying to keep compatibility all through. Yeah. I think it's going to be a drawback at some point when they do want to introduce new things that aren't in any other world. Well, you know, historically, um, there has been a project in open, it still exists, but it isn't based on OpenSim anymore. They started out basing, basing on OpenSim as the, the server platform, but they created a, an entirely new viewer and an entirely new way of rendering things. They used meshes from the onset, they didn't have prims. Uh, the project was called Real Extend. I might link under the post to them. Um, which is kind of similar to what you said in the beginning. They had a different vision of how the world would have to look and behave. You had everything was meshes and everything could be like animated. The most impressive thing I saw there was they had an aquarium full of animated fish that were objects. And I think that would, but, but it never went anywhere. I didn't get gained attraction in the user base. So they are just two guys writing the code pretty much for themselves. That would probably be the other drawback um, is when you do go so far away from your basics, you were your your second life your open sim is you're getting into a territory like um blue mars did where it was so, too different that people couldn't relate to it or it was too different that people didn't want to try to relate to it well from what i understood open no not open uh blue mars was very popular with with people who wanted to really make 3d um models but I don't know, it was too difficult for the average user to create something there. So we had this, this large gap between consumers and uh, professionals and all the, the amateur builders or the people who, like me, came to Second Live and didn't know anything about 3D modeling and learned it from Tristing Prims. Uh, didn't stand a chance in Blue Mars. And I think that's where the other the other thing comes from. Who do you who do you try to bring in first? 
and who do you try to keep there? Um, your consumers who buy the products and they buy more and more pieces of land because there's more and more products to res or fashion to wear or the people who build it. Where do you find that happy medium? Well, I don't think there's such a... I don't think the divide is that big. I think everybody is a consumer and some kind of a builder as well. I mean, people in Second Life, everybody needs to have at least a little bit of understanding of the edit tools, otherwise they won't even adjust their hairs right. And now with Meta, you really do need that that's where it starts to become a catch because where the clothes are going now especially for fashion Ellie probably knows or Elle probably knows this it's almost like you just right click wear now it's not as yeah. difficult to get things to fit even if it's done in prims you just click and the script does it all for you right which I have, which to, I admit, have to admit I, I kind of like, kinda like. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I really love it, other times I hate it, but um, it really has taken a lot of, uh, of the editing out of it to where you just put it on and wear it, and, and that is kind of nice. It is, and it's really nice for new users because it's simpler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but have you, because I don't know anything about this, but have you noticed that the, the marketplace of mesh items is somehow smaller than the the fashion marketplace you had before like because you know in order to make mesh clothing you need to be pretty much of an expert in 3d modeling whereas before you could just slap prims together and and paint on an avatar layer and sell it is is, is the variety somehow smaller i don't feel like the variety is any smaller what is different is that you really have to hunt and search and look to see who is making good quality mesh uh, that's for me that's the different difference I mean you can find mesh anywhere but some of it is, is terrible and some of it doesn't work at all um, and then others is really really good and, and nice quality stuff so you kind of have to to hunt and search a little bit more I think for for the really good stuff I agree with Elle on that yeah, I definitely agree. Um, there's builders packs out there now, and there's some amazing texture artists that work with those <laughs> yes, who also yes. add their own little touches to it. There is original mesh makers, um, especially for hair. Then there is, you know, the people who just buy the builders pack and put it out. So you do, and that comes out nice sometimes too. <laughs> so you really do have to search for it. But I think the market for mesh is actually quite big. Yeah. Um, yeah. The fashion community has embraced it more than I thought they would because I held off for quite some time well I can say for, for me as a, as a man it has always been hard to find good good clothes in Second Life I pretty much my whole wardrobe is from, was from Bear Rose because they're the only the only clothes that actually suit and fit me um, and I think it's even worse with mesh items, probably for women too, because most of them are modeled after this hulky guy uh, shape, which you know looks ridiculous on me. Yeah, that is one of the. Go ahead, go ahead. Now. Should we draw a strong? See, that's one of the things that we have a little easier. We have. Um, standard sizing for women right, right. so you have everything from extra small to extra large extra extra large everything in between some of them work off of a standard sizing module some of them work off of that and then add a couple of extras in of their mm -hmm. own that they come up with sizes so I think women do have shopping a little bit easier I do blogging every once in a while for um, Avatar Bazaar who makes men and women's clothes and trying to find things that We'll go with him. Vanish, I feel bad for guys. <laughs> yeah, I got you guys got used to it over the years. It's just the way it is. And I, I just wear the same stuff 
all the time anyway. You guys definitely need a little bit more diversity, but I think with mesh, the real thing is your reservoirs, your houses, your decorations, the furniture we're sitting on. I honestly think that's what the real game changer is when it comes to mesh. I don't think so. Uh, because I haven't, you know, it hasn't made such an impact on them as it has on clothes so far. It, it seems like clothes and mesh clothes are, are fixing a problem that everybody didn't know they had. And and with with houses and furniture, you can still make pretty nice stuff using just regular prims or sculpties. For Second Life, though, the mesh is less prims if you have a creator who does it well. And I think that's going to where the difference is going to be made and also where InWorlds is going to explode with content once, if they haven't already. Like I said, I'm not really sure. Um, I had thought mesh was coming, but not quite there yet. You have very detailed original creators of mesh with one prim. So Second Life is quite amazing. Those stars that are behind you vanish. Um, they're from Trump. Hold on, I crashed. Uh-oh. Yeah. You're trying to do too many things at one time. I was just you? assuming I crashed. Yeah, Spanish crashed. I'm sorry. He'll be right back. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> he was trying to do too many things at one time. I wasn't. I, I was assuming. I tried to tell him he is not super heavy, but he doesn't believe me. So. He building off into another page and reading and. And yes, he's got like 15 pages open. I have and not. Stuff running and. Yeah, he's probably downloading something. I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're full of shit. <laughs> I am not. I am not. <laughs> yes, I was just yes, looking at those stars, Misty. They are, they are quite, quite lovely. lovely. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Uh, ah, there you are. That's, that's those stars those are why stars I started buying, buying mesh for the property. <laughs> Let's zoom with the stars. They're mesh stars. They're mesh stars and they're one prim. Wow. Yeah. Or one land impact, I should say. One land impact. So impact. here I have something like 400 and some prims I can play with. Yeah. This size parcel is like a 2048 over in, in Worlds. You'd have like, what, a thousand prims? I don't know. That's an exaggeration, probably. But imagine what the world is going to look like when you have one prim highly detailed items on top of their already huge prim allotment yeah that's true yeah that's true especially, especially because, because i don't think I don't the think land the impact land works, impact works. Uh, i do think i, I do, it, do it, know it, it doesn't it work doesn't in, in work open sim or in, in, in vanilla open vanilla sim open i don't sim. know I about in world if they will make it work but but in, in vanilla in, in open vanilla sim, open it doesn't matter doesn't what kind of what mesh kind of you rent, it's always going to be calculated as just one prim. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Me either. And I do yeah. vaguely remember somewhere reading that they wanted to do smart mesh, um, like the, the original mesh creators here, where it has to be low poly, maybe? I'm not really familiar with how they build mesh. I'm extremely impressed with it, but I don't know how they build it. I'm just always, when I saw those stars and was like, that's only one land impact, you've got to be kidding me. It's like a dream come true for landscapers. It is, yes. It is, yes. And, it, and it might or it, might it will in the long run, run make run, the world make look the world even look better than it better already, than does. already does. Um, it really does. So is that maybe so is that some maybe part some of the, part the, the vision, vision of being of like Second Life, Life only, better, only better, pretty much coming pretty much through coming in, Second in Second Life? 
they've done a few things. Um, they've they've kind of watched what Second Life has done in the past, and some of the mistakes Second Life made. They've worked really hard not to make those mistakes. You know, in in worlds is in their growing pain still. Second Life is pretty much in their maintain and achieve stage. So you can look back on what's gone wrong, both with user base, coding, um, everything else, and learn from that and really grow your world nicely if if that's how you're going to do it. What, what kind of, kind of, of, mistakes, of mistakes do you mistakes think Second, Second Life has made? made? Or do they think? Um, I don't know what mistakes they necessarily think. I think um, one of the things that happened over in InWorlds is when they pulled in their homesteads. I think they call them something different. Um, for the life of me, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Open spaces, maybe, or something like that. When, home, when Second Life did it, um, they had some really strange rules in place. You can use it for anything. You got all these prims. Um, you had to have a main sim attached to it, of course. So that was a good thing. When InWorlds pulled them online, they worked hard not to have the loads on their servers. That occurred with Second Life, where they needed to change their price range. The Second Life introduced a whole second secondary type of homestead, open space sim. Um, InWorlds definitely learned from that. And there were some growing pains with that as well when they introduced those because you know, your landlords wanted it to be one way. They wanted commercial on it, and InWorlds didn't want that headache to go with it, I guess I would say. And so they made sure that they had rules in place before they came online so they didn't have to deal with the headaches later on. And that was probably one of the smartest things they did to learn from another world and what happened when those rules weren't in place. Hmm. Well, from what, well, I, from under, what I, mean, I understand, I mean, in almost, in almost anywhere, anywhere in open, in open, open sim, sim, you know, having, you know, a, full having a full region is pretty, is pretty much the standard, standard. and it just and depends, it just on, depends how on how many prims, prims you get for you get for, for that region. For that region. So, so I don't, I don't even I don't know, know how the prices and the 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 open space prim limits for for in worlds are. Um. But, but it's still it's still, it's it's still basically it's everybody, everybody has, has a, a full a region full just like just with like five thousand prims, prims instead of fifteen thousand or something, right? right? Yes, it's similar to that, um, except for they blocked commercial use on theirs. They blocked other than owner resing. I think they did something with estate managers, so estate managers did have the right to decorate. I believe um, you cannot parcel it out, I, I think. Hmm. Um, so they put a few different hard coding limits onto these their open spaces, which I think was a really good idea because then they're not going to have that headache two years down the line um, where you have heavy loads on their servers. They're meant to be low load sims crossovers to other sims, sailing sims, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. versus living and working on them. What, what, what did what, you have what in your world? I had mainland. I loved it. Um, they have mainland? When I first, mainland. They have mainland. They did theirs a little bit differently, which I also really like. They did clusters of mainland. I believe they have two now, the original and then the secondary, with a um, whole bunch of privately owned ones in between with some waterways that are owned by InWorld so you can sail between the two mainlands. And their clusters worked out really well because you had, uh, I think it was 4, 8, 12, 16 maybe per cluster. So you were it was like a little small community. It was quite nice. Mm. Did you have like did a have parcel, like a parcel or, or are there parcels or, parcel, or did you rent a whole, whole sim? I actually rented the whole sim directly from InWorlds. Um, there is no parcels. They don't do small parcels, which in my opinion is a drawback. So well, you either rent a whole mainland sim from them directly or you can rent a whole mainland sim um, from a landlord or a smaller parcel from a landlord. 
I would think like with the like prices, with the, prices uh, the low the prices low they have, that it wouldn't really, you know, it wouldn't wouldn't really make much of a difference to them if if you if they would rent out parcels. I think I think they start at thirty dollars a month or something. Um, so, last I checked, mainland was sixty, and I think private was seventy or seventy-five. Yeah, for a whole yeah, for sim. A whole sim. But you can have you like can right for whole sims and then you can get parcels from landlords for about five dollars a month and mm -hmm. with the the amount of prims you get um for the parcels it's a good deal it's like five dollars for 40.96 or ten dollars depending mm -hmm. on who you rent from of course that is a good, that is a good deal it really is i do wish that they had parcels that they rented directly from in worlds because it's a trust factor um, you can, they have some excellent landlords, but then anybody can close shop at any time for any reason. So it's kind yeah. of a trust factor. It's a, it's a, it's a leap of faith, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah it's pretty much the same in Second Life too, though. Yes. Yes. Hmm. I'm, I'm just trying I'm, to... I'm just trying to... Is is in worlds because it always seemed to me like it's more popular with the role playing crowd, like the the fantasy role playing crowd most of all. Um, is it themed or anything? You know, I have yet to figure out really who in worlds is popular with. I know they're popular with builders. Yeah. Um, like I, I've said before, it's a builder's dream. I know that the art community is huge over there. They have a lot of artists building up Sims. Role playing, I'm not really sure. I know they've tried to get it going. I'm not, I, I haven't been in since May, so I'm not sure how far they've gotten with that for the different genres. Um, the fashion community, they do some things. They've tried to get feeds together. It just never worked. So I'm not, they're almost eclectic. A little bit of everything, I think. Hmm. Hmm. And on the whole, on do the you whole, think do people, you think are, people are, are happy with the way, with the, way or the direction the founders, founders are going? Are going? Because, because it didn't, because it sounded in that thread that, that a lot of people were disappointed or not quite or happy, not quite with, happy with, with, with the state of things, but I didn't quite, I didn't understand, quite understand what, what they were they unhappy were with. Unhappy well, I can't really speak for anybody else in that thread. Originally, the thread was started just as like almost a dream type of deal. What would you like to see eventually yeah. in these in these virtual worlds? And then it slowly, as with everything on out of world, turns to in worlds because it's a common denominator for all of us. Um, you know, coding wise, Trank is amazing. No, I don't think anybody can complain about his coding ability. He's done Flux. They're getting their physics online. Um, it's taken a little time, and I know that's disappointed some people, but, you know, two, three years ago when I first started over there, I kind of figured it was going to be a four-year process. So mm. it, things take time, especially when you only have one, and then I think he has somebody else working with him. Um, so that takes time. But I think the biggest thing is it's a small community. And when you have a small community, and I was one of them, by no means am I innocent on this, you have your screamers, the ones who want what they want when they want it. And you either, as a founder, have to choose. Do you stop and listen to them and give them what they want, and, and or do you just continue on with your path? And I think that was that's part of why I left, is because there was so much stopping to talk, to discuss, to try to make everybody happy, and you cannot make everybody happy. It's impossible. So, what was it that you what were that, that, you that you would most have most liked have from liked them, or from that them, you were most passionate most about? I'm sorry. Well, you say you were a screamer. What did? What is it that you screamed most about? Oh, screamer-wise, I, you know, I'm very, I've management um, most of my adult life when I'm working. So my big thing is your policies. Put your policies in place. 
and stick to them. Even if it's me saying, I don't like your policy, can you change it? Mm -hmm. If it's the best thing for your company, you need to stay with it. Um, it's nice that you want to try to please everybody, but you just really can't. And you do have people that are only looking out for themselves. They're not necessarily looking out for the good of the community. And I think that's what finally they had me step back for a while. And they have not done that as much lately. They're, you know, they've always listened to their community, which is huge. It's a good thing to listen. Mm -hmm. But you can't always change to please them. You have to stay on your path. And I think that's as frustrating for them as it is for anybody else. Yeah. Because they have to stop everything they're doing to try to make everybody else happy. Yeah, and not just that. Not just it, that. It, 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 becomes it, it becomes unclear what the unclear rules, what are rules are when you, you know, when they, you know, when they, they just change every so often. Every so often. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and you, know, you know, it just it gives just some gives people the feeling that there is a certain group of people, or, people or, or let's say that let's the say louder that you the scream, louder the, more you scream the, more the more you get accommodated. Yes, and that's never a good thing, um, especially for a smaller virtual world that's still in beta and starting out. Yeah. It's the perception. You cannot have the perception of a certain group of people being listened to more than others, whether they actually are or not is kind of just beside the point. People can only see what they read. And if there's a, the perception that somebody has the ear and has the ability to change policies to benefit them, then it turns other people off. So that's something that, you know, virtual worlds really need to be careful of, especially startup ones. That's true. No, well, yeah, I think okay, Second Life Second had, had, or maybe still or maybe has, still the same has problem same that problem certain that groups of certain residents groups of are residents more, are equal, more than equal than others. <laughs> yeah, they have it too. You know, they they have the land barons. People say that the land barons have a little bit more pool. Hmm. You have certain creators that get showcased a little bit more. Um, so you think that they have a little bit more pool. Whether they actually do or not, I really don't know. But the perception is there that they do. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Did you, Did you miss anything miss in Inworlds world that, that you had in Second had Life? Second like, life, I don't know, fashion-wise? Fashion -wise, I, I know that, I know that good, good items are items scarce are all over, all over Open Sim, Sim, but they seem to be less scarce in Inworlds than anywhere else. Fashion-wise, I really missed the... Um, what I call the dark and dirty. It's probably really not, but your your darker type items, your bloody type items, mm. your um, got, gothic got items, they're a little bit more mainstream and also a little bit more fantasy. So I did kind of miss that when I was in InWorlds. Um, what I miss there now for not being in there is the building and I miss, um, the prims <laughs> yeah well yeah, you know yeah. as far as that as far goes as that you can goes, always you can install always your own open sim on, on your computer and, and build and pretty much pretty offline much I, I know I, that I know a lot of a lot uh, creators do creators that now, do that now. Be just because just then they, because can they can test test texture, texture uploads, uploads without paying without for them and and try out stuff without worrying about prims and and then just, and then just export, export it and, and import it into Second Live or anywhere, or anywhere else they want, want and sell it. sell it. I think that's probably one of their better ideas because, you know, InWorlds is different than Second Life where you can import and export for free. They don't have any upload charges. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Second Life, unless you build it completely from scratch, you're not getting it out. So, yeah, you know, I do can, know a lot of builders I, are doing off-world off building. They do it on their yeah. own. And I had a friend, Johnny, try to explain to me how to get a sim online on a stick, I think it's called, or something like that. Sim on a stick. And, on a stick. <laughs> yes, I am just not that technical. I am a little bit challenged. Well, that's what sim on a stick is there, there for. It's really it's just, really just to, to plug it into your computer, into your computer and, 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 turn and turn it on, and, and, and you should and be good to go. But is it that easy? <laughs> it, it should be. It should I never be. really I never tried, tried it myself, myself because, because I, 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 I run it on I my web server. My web server. But, uh, but uh, it, it should it, be. It that's should the, be. That's, that's the, 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 the idea behind it. Idea behind it. 
I'm kind of. I'm kind of. Elle, you're laughing. You sound like you're not that technical either. <laughs> it does sound too good to be true. I tried it once, and I don't know what I did, but it just didn't work out right. I know Tormi had um, some stuff going on with OpenSim, and I think she even might have connected to HyperGrid. And I went in there once, and that was fun. But the technical yeah. side of it just blew my mind. I'm like, you, you, you did what? <laughs> well, okay. Oh, okay. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I have the the wonderful, the wonderful honor, honor of living with Banish, so I don't have to worry about those things anymore. But you know, I often wonder about it. I mean, if I didn't uh, live with him, I mean, I just don't think I would even consider those things. I mean, I think that. I would, I would be my own worst enemy because, because I would just, just think that that, that was just, that was just way, way more than I, I could ever attempt. Um, and so, and so I, 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 I kind of understand, understand where you're coming from. from. I mean, I'm, I'm just, just not sure I could, could do that. Could do that. <laughs> I don't know, Vanish will often, 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 he'll make his tutorials, tutorials and he'll talk about how simple and easy, and easy things are. And, and, and I think, well, yeah, they're simple, simple and easy because, easy because it's you. you. That's not, <laughs> not simple Exactly. <laughs> he had the tutorial on his line. Actually, I think this is how I met Vanish. He had the tutorial online to export or import, uh, import some of his builds. And I brought some of them into InWorld. And he's like, okay, you know, you got to click this button, that button, use this viewer. And even that, I was like, oh, am I doing this right? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's nothing to there's do nothing wrong. To do wrong. If, either it works yeah, or it, it works, doesn't. So it and if it doesn't work, then you work, try again, try right? Again, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Realize that you got to press certain buttons in order to get it in. I think I was trying to export and an import they're, they're or something all, for a while there. They're all labeled, they're all labeled the buttons. The buttons. <laughs> it, sounds it sounds easy, easy darling. darling. Okay. Okay. The advanced. I'm not technically advanced. <laughs> okay, no, that's okay. why I'm writing that's tutorials. Writing tutorials. Yes. yes, you do a wonderful job. That you do. Thank you. Thank you. So, so what changes what do changes you think do you will think come will in virtual come worlds? In virtual worlds? No, I, I don't really know. Um, I'm hoping that it becomes even more of a social platform in the sense that, you know, you go into a virtual world and you don't realize it until you get there of all the people that you can meet, talk to, and learn about their cultures. You guys are over in Europe, I'm in America. Never in my life did I think I would be able to sit down and discuss on voice anything. It would be really neat, I think it was Tormi who mentioned holograms. If somebody wanted to meet, say, face to face, but they have the inability to, the lack of ability to do it through flights and travel and real, in real time, they can pull a hologram up of each other and and converse that way. I mean, how cool would that be? Yeah. Yeah, but isn't that yeah, what isn't you can do with Skype? Then you don't really need a virtual world for that. You can do it in Skype. It's choppy. It's video. You know, it's not. It's real time, and I think that's great. But if you wanted to get into the virtual world and interact with your virtual world through a hologram, you mm. can't do that with Skype. That's true. Um, um, I just, I you just, know, you know I, I, I keep I, thinking I keep about thinking this and, about and I, keep I keep wondering if we if may, have may have come to come some kind to of some a barrier, kind of barrier in virtual worlds, in virtual worlds because, because interacting, interacting in virtual in worlds is, is, is fucking, is fucking Funny. funny and it's it's and it's, 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 it's it's a lot of a lot of fun and, and it's interesting and it's exciting and, exciting. and, and there's, so there's so many things to do, things to do but it's also but it's tedious also it's not, it's not the, 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 the the quick the and, quick and uh, easy, approach easy approach that you can have with have like email or forums or anything or else on the web it takes time and effort and you you know you need really need to concentrate on this one thing and so i don't think that is Good for, Good for for a lot of, for uses. A lot of uses. 
No, in that sense, you're right. So I'd like to see them easier, um, a little bit more simple. You know, I was in Cloud Party when they first started, and they had a tutorial that you sort of had to finish in order to get to the next level or to be able to go someplace. Mm -hmm. And I think that was... I was just basically saying, that, you know, the ease of use. You mentioned that it's tedious to interact, and it really is. Um, yeah. I don't know how they would go about doing it, but it would be nice to make things easier. Cloud Party had the um, tutorials that you had to go through to get to the next level. So you were kind of forced to learn everything. Um, that was nice, but still, it was a learning process and it was a little tedious. You know, just sitting here, you had to figure out how to sit, how yeah. to change your animations. Just be nice to have it a little bit easier for people coming in where they didn't have to have such a high learning yeah. curve. But I mean, you know, you know, even if you, even if you, you make it super make easy, there are easy, certain there things are certain you things can't just you can't just make any easier. Make any you easier. still have to still have, have a way have of, way moving, of your moving your avatar or moving, or moving around, around the environment, the environment. And, and, and finding, finding people, people, figuring out who is out talking, who is talking and, 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 and zooming, zooming maybe. maybe, I mean, Things that, you, things that you don't, don't need to worry, need about, to worry about in, in, you know, in, in real life real or, life on, Skype or, on, Skype or Skype on Twitter or, Twitter or, or anywhere, else. anywhere else. So, you know, the, the, you the, know, the environment, environment itself, itself is, 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 is challenging. challenging. Yeah, that's very true, too. Um, I wouldn't even begin to try to figure out how to f fix that, or even if you could or would want to. You know, it's, it would be nice if things could be easier. You know, we were talking about viewers earlier and how you have 10 different viewers and everyone is different. So trying to find things is always hard. Um, can you mainstream that? Can you mainline it so it's all pretty much equal across the board? I don't know. Well, you could, but I don't think people would want to because everybody's going to be unhappy with a certain user interface and want something different. And so... You know, you know, they just pick the one day. Then you're back to, do you please the masses or do yeah. you try to, you know, I don't know. It's a tough call. I mean, you know, the, the, if you if you stick to the regular Second Life viewer and don't use any of the third party viewers, then it is streamlined. You know, you all you get the same experience on every version they put out. Unless it's V2 and then you pull your hair out. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, you know, I, you know we, 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 we buried we that. Buried that. It's, it's, it's better for it's it. Better for it. Okay. okay. Um, um, do you have do anything you have to say on the topic? topic? I, I do not. Do not. Okay. okay. Um, we um, usually feature usually some fashion. Some do you want to feature, you feature your fashion, your fashion uh, uh, Misty? Uh, Misty? I'm sorry, what was that? We usually feature some fashion in our videos. Ellie talks about what she's wearing. Do you want to say anything about yours? Oh, um, sure. Um, I wasn't expecting that. Basically, I just <laughs> threw it together this morning. I say that lightly. It took me two hours shopping. Um, I have on Jane everyday shorts, which are mesh and come in eight million different sizes, it seems, but that's a good thing for us women. Um, I went ahead and tossed on um, SYS, Show Your Style, I believe that is. And I cannot pronounce the name of the jacket. It's Uzbek. Um, and my boots are my favorite boots ever. I wear them all the time. They're Lassitude and Enu, Wanderlust. She is probably one of the most amazing boot creators on the grid. I have everything she owns, and if I don't have it, I will soon. So, and the hair is by um, Elect, uh, how do you say that? E? Elect, Electra, Electria? Yes. Yeah. She, I didn't even know she was back designing hair. She does mesh hair now. Oh, wow. This is mesh hair? This is mesh hair? This is mesh hair. The jacket is mesh, the boots are mesh, the okay. shorts are mesh. Pretty much everything's mesh. Oh, is it not Elegatera? That's how you pronounce it. Thank you. Yeah, Elegatera Tiramisu, yeah. 
I never even knew she was back. I saw her on the feeds the one day, and she's been in World, I guess, for a while now. And I saw that she was back. I have all of her older hairs from when she had her store before, and I've gone a little crazy in there. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me I, too. I, I had all of them had all once. Them once. She had a she sale, had a sale where, she where she sold all the styles, all the styles for like 40, 40 lindens a pack. a pack. And I kind of uh, yeah, went crazy well, there and bought them, bought them all. I think that's when yes, I finally I've rounded out my collection. Yeah. yeah. I've, been I've been looking at that, at that hair and I kept I thinking, I like that hair. And now that you mention it, I think I have it. Well, you probably do. Yes, um, and, and I'm also wearing uh, her hair today from Elegatera. Let me see if I can. It's, this is called Caramel, um, and I really like it. I, I think it maybe mesh as well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one is Figure. I have Caramel, too. I love that one as well. Yes. Yes, yeah, she, yeah, she does, does some really, really lovely stuff. stuff. Right, she, I, had she had a sale, sale recently, and I just, and I just went in and bought like almost one of, one of everything store, in the store. So, so it, uh, it pretty, uh, pretty much wiped me out. Me out. Um, um, I love that you can get them the essentials. Yes, like the yes, whole pack, the color pack essentials. Perfect. Things. Yeah, yeah very not very design many designers do that, that and I wish they would, you know, because, you know, because I would be willing to pay, you know, you know 275 lindens for a set of, a set of hair, hair like that, but I don't want to pay 275 for, for all reds or, or all blacks or, or, you know, when I'm going to want several different colors, colors of course they know that and that's why they do it that way. But I appreciate, I appreciate the fact that she does, that she does a nice do a nice mix, mix and then that way you can go in and, and, buy, the and buy the basics and, and uh, have a little bit of everything. So, so I, I think that's very considerate of her. I like that. I like that. Um, um, my sunglasses are from Kennedy's. Kennedy's. I thought they, they were adorable with the little butterfly. butterfly. And, and you can change, change the colors. And, and as you know, as you know I'm, I'm just a real big freak about, freak about being, able being able to change colors, colors on things. So That's um, really, really important, important to me for some, for some reason that I haven't quite, quite yet about. figured out. Um, um, my fingernails. Um, um, are from WTG, WTG just who just makes some of the nicest, nicest fingernails on the grid. Um, um, they are they just are just so involved and detailed. And yes, and I know Vanish. They have seven hundred and fifty thousand prims, and I'm probably lagging down the entire third world as we speak. You will make me crash twice. Yes, yes, it was, I, it was my fingernails. I know, I know. Um. My jewelry, my jewelry is from, is from Ear Candy. Ear candy. Uh, absolutely, absolutely love Ear Candy. Ear candy. Um, um, she does, she does really some really, really nice stuff, stuff that I would just wear, wear in the real world, world and, and I, I, I love, love her stuff. stuff. Also, also, the skin, skin is from, from Izzy's. Izzy's. Uh, this is, uh, this one, is one of her older skins now, now called Cassandra, Cassandra uh, uh, with freckles. freckles. I've added freckles some freckles to it. And, uh, and uh, if, you're if you're not familiar with Izzy's, with Izzy's she makes uh, some of the prettiest skin little skins. I mean, they're so, so sweet. sweet. And, uh, and, you know, I don't know how else to describe them. They just... Sorry about that. <laughs> it's and I'm actually zooming your skin while we're waiting. She I've has... seen the pictures and she, they're so cute. Yes. Her skin, and you know, she's a fairly new designer for me. Uh, I mean, I, I have not really been aware of her for just in the last few months. And every skin that she puts out, I just absolutely love. I mean, they, every one of them is just sweet, and I, like I said, I don't know how else to describe it. They, they just look so fresh and so new, and and you know, just like a, a young woman or an, an older girl, you know, that that's just now finding out about life, you know, and happiness and love, love, and I, I just I, love the skins. I just. I think they're sweet. Are you back? Are you back, baby? Adorable. Adorable.
Yeah, yeah. She does, she does some really, really, nice, really stuff. nice stuff. Um, um, we, were talking, we were talking about skins. About skins. Um, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, Misty and I, and I have just talked about how much we love these new skins while you were gone. But, uh, she uh, she uh, just seems every, every skin, skin that she makes is, is, is just sweet, sweet and, and fresh and, and young and, and beautiful. And, uh, and uh, everywhere that comes, comes out, I just cannot resist getting. getting um, I, I, I try sometimes to say, well, I'm not going to get that one this time, but I just can't help it. They are they are so beautiful. And and she does, oh, gee, a Jillian different things that you can do with them. She's got eyeshadows and lipsticks and one thing that she does that I absolutely love is with every skin she includes a uh, a glove so that if you wear prim nails like I do uh, you don't have to worry about trying to match the skin tone. You have a glove to go along with it. Um, her freckles are also some of the best on the grid. I think they are just so Sweet, sweet and, 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 and fresh looking. They, they, you, know, they're not you know, they're not hard, hard or, or, anything, or anything. They just blend in really nicely um, with the skin. And um, she also, she also usually, usually offers a uh, face only freckles or a face and body freckles. I mean, she just does tons of things that. Uh, Little additions, little additions for your skin. For your skin. So, so if you've, you've not checked out these, you, you need to. Um, this, um, this lovely little, little dress is, is from Purple Moon. Moon. Uh, again, again, one of my very favorite designers. It comes in a multitude of colors. And, uh, and uh, if you're looking for a ball gown to wear this year for um, your your holiday, holiday festivities, festivities. Purple, Moon Purple Moon would be one of the very first, first places that I would start looking. Um, shoes. shoes. I'm so glad, I'm so glad I got to wear these shoes. shoes. Vanish tried to make me take my shoes off. off. Misty can test that. <laughs> yes, these shoes, these shoes are from Ison. Um, I bought them a while back at a collaborate event, event which I love, love, love. Collaborate. And, um, and um, I got several, I got several pairs of them. They were, they so, were cute. so cute, and, uh, and uh, have, have not had a chance to wear them until so now. So I got to wear, I got to wear them. So happy about that. There you go, love. There you go, Thank love. You. Thank you. No problem. No problem. <laughs> I'm wearing something I'm wearing from Barrows called, called Sot. Sot. That is C O T. And everything else is my own making. Okay. Any, okay. Last, Any words? last words? Any recommendations? recommendations? Somebody? Somebody? Bring Bring good. Good. Yeah, I think I'm good too. Uh, thank you very, uh, thank much, you for, very for much for joining, for us, joining us and having us. us. It, it was, was very enjoyable, very enjoyable. Talking, to you. talking to you. It was lots of fun. Thanks for coming up with the idea and having me on your no as problem. well. No problem. Thanks, Misty.